Hi, I'm Will Bishop, and today we'll take a quick look at how you can start working with our v2 REST API in just a couple of minutes. To get started, all you need is a Miro account and a developer team. If you don't already have one, you can set one up for free. Let's jump in. If we navigate to our REST API documentation at developers.miro.com, we'll find our quick start guide for the REST API which details the steps we can take to make our first API request. From a high level, we're going to take the following steps. First, create a developer team. Second, create an app. Third, set permissions. Fourth, generate an access token. And most importantly, call Miro's API. Following our documentation, you'll need to make sure you're signed into your Miro account and that you've created a developer team in Miro. The easiest way to do this is to click on the link directly in our documentation. This link will take you to the build app section of your Miro dashboard. From here, check off the terms of service box that'll appear and hit create new app. Specify a name for your app and which team you'd like to create it under. In our case, the developer team that we just made will be just fine. For security reasons, we strongly encourage all new apps to check off the expire user authorization token as a best practice. This ensures that both an access token and refresh token are returned as part of your OAuth flow and increase the security of your integration. On the next page, we'll find our client credentials have been generated, including a client ID and client secret. These will be leveraged by Miro's OAuth flow to generate an access token for requests to our REST API. You'll also notice additional fields for an OAuth redirect URL, an app URL, and more. We won't get into these right now as we just want to generate a token as quickly as possible to call the API. To do so, we'll go down to our permissions and select the scopes we want our token to have. In this instance, we can select board read and board write. Keep in mind this will determine which Miro endpoints we're able to call and the HTTP methods that we can use. Once we've selected our desired scopes, we'll hit install app and get OAuth token. A modal will appear asking us to authorize these permissions under our desired team and then issue us an access token. We'll use this access token to authorize our requests to the Miro REST API. For some context, when we click on the install app and get OAuth token button, Miro's OAuth 2.0 flow is running behind the scenes and returning us this access token. This button is intended for being able to quickly generate a token for testing purposes, but in practice, developers will need to implement the OAuth flow as part of their integration. You can find more details on that at developers.miro.com. If we go back to our documentation, we can make a test request. You'll see that our docs are interactive and allow you to make requests from directly within them. Let's explore an example with the get board items endpoint. On the right hand side, you can see our built-in request module and a place to paste in an OAuth access token. Let's paste in the token that we were just issued. Now we'll quickly enter a board ID, which we can grab from the URL of a Miro board. If you don't have a Miro board, you can create one directly from your dashboard. After we add this, we can then hit try it to make this request. We can see that this was successful based on the 201 OK response in green on the right hand side and we'll see the API response details immediately below. Here we see I'm a sticky reflecting the sticky that we just created. That's it for now. It's your turn to test out all that the Miro REST API has to offer. You can find this and many more helpful resources on developers.miro.com. Aside from our YouTube channel here, don't forget to check us out on our other channels as well.